society, guys. Um, the in-camera phone transition thing. So that's what we're doing today, is that guy. I actually shot this already. I did the entire thing. I synced it up, went through Premiere, went through and like started siphoning through the footage when all of a sudden I realized I had like toilet paper or something on my face. Richard, do I have a mark on my face? Nope, nothing. It's like right here, it's like on my face. Not here or here so much, but right here. Nope, ship shape. So yeah, back to the transition, golly. All that, you know, stuff aside, uh, let's hop into this and let's get rid of it. All right, boom. So once you're inside After Effects, the first thing that you'll notice that I did is I created a comp by just dragging my, uh, by just dragging my first shot into the comp. And the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is probably trim it up a bit so I have uh, exactly what I want to use in my shot. And maybe right about here works for the transition or whatnot. And we'll just do a short uh, version of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my other clip and set it underneath. Uh, that you can see right here, and then let's go ahead and trim this work area down a bit so we are just working within those parameters in the timeline. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and shut my audio off on both of those layers. If we scrub the timeline, this is what we got. I shot this in 120 frame rate, so slow motion. Um, I wanted to be able to speed ramp and just for uh, just. For a quick heads up, I do all my speed ramps at the very end of all of my stuff, but that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and start tracking our footage. So first things first, um, if you guys don't have FX console, go up to your effects and presets window and just type in Mocha, dump that on your first uh, shot, uh, set your resolution to full so we can get a proper track inside Mocha and select your Mocha. I always like to go to the end of my timeline when I'm dealing with this kind of, like with a phone like this and I, just because I get more information in there. Um, but if you want to go ahead and start tracking around your tracker markers inside of your phone model. This gives Mocha enough information to get a really good proper track. So I go to the end of my timeline, get that set up, I'll name my layer uh, screen track up and let's go back to the end and then double click and then rename it screen track hit enter select perspective because we're going to want that on the phone as well and then we can go ahead and hit track back this is going to take the longest all right cool so our track is finished and we are good to roll now guys um one of the things that you want to keep in mind if you scrub the playhead you can kind of see back your uh your track so next thing, go ahead and hit show surface tracking data so we can go ahead and set our parameters for making sure that our constraints for our corner pin are set up when we add that information um, and we add our tracking data back into our secondary layer. So I'm gonna do this really rough. Uh, if, you, if you're doing this for any piece of footage, make sure that you really kind of fine tune this and get all of that set up the way that you want it to be. Um, but that being said, this is a really cool tip and trick. Go over to your layer, or go over to your layer properties, and s go down here to insert clip and select logo. And then if you hit play through your play playhead, you can see exactly what <clears throat> with the logo placed. It just kind of inserts uh, a Mocha logo into your track to give you an idea of what your footage is going to be doing. So it gives you an idea if you screwed something up or if it's still on point, it looks great, right? So awesome, our Mocha track is set, it's saved. We are going back into After Effects now. So you can go ahead to your tracking data inside your effects panel right here and select Create Track Data. You can go ahead and select that screen track and hit OK. You're gonna see all of your information update and your corner pin gets set on screen and on canvas. So boom, I just went into 100% just to kind of zoom in there for you guys. All right, so everything's been set, but you're gonna notice you don't really see anything other than that being set, right? Uh, so we have a few things that we still need to do. And the first thing is first, and that is to pre-compose our secondary shot. And we wanna leave all of those attributes inside the actual layer so that we can control them and they actually update for us 
on the canvas out here. Um, so let's go ahead and call this screen transition. Um, I'm really picky about capitalization and nomenclature. So anyways, go ahead and hit OK. And you can go back to your phone shot if you want and select corner pin supports motion blur. Select the layer that you're targeting, which is your screen transition. And let's go ahead and apply that export. Now, you're going to notice nothing changes other than the obvious, right? That you can see that something happened, but you can't see anything. So if you close your first shot, your phone shot, you'll notice, boom, your track's already been set. I'm going to go ahead and set this back down to four so you can see this playthrough and scrub through faster. So boom, uh, I can see that it's tracking. That's obvious. And a cool little tip and trick to make sure that your track is actually working the way that you want to is to go ahead and turn on your, your uh, layer at the top and select your opacity and go ahead and set it down to 50% and then scrub the playhead and see how everything's lining up so far. Looks good. We seem to have a proper track. Awesome. We're already on our way. All right, so go ahead and set that opacity back to 100%. And the first thing that we're gonna want to do is to go ahead and key out our green screen. Now here's something to consider. My RGB uh, uh, keyboard in the background faded to green at a certain part when I was doing the, green, uh, the, the keying out. So this kind of sucks. It can be fixed by a simple mask and a mask track by uh, you know, just tracking that and uh, subtracting that mask information. Uh, and you can fix that a little bit later. We're gonna do it a, a little bit dirty style. Yep, uh, Michael Scott hashtag, that's what she said. But anyways, uh, we can fix that. So uh, that being said, uh, let's go ahead over to our effects and let's pull up our key light tool. I always, always, always use the, the built-in animation preset under image and utilities. Uh, with key light, key cleaner, and advanced fill suppressor. Go ahead and drag that to your phone shot layer right underneath your mocha track. You can close up your mocha track and we are going to go ahead and key this out. Select your greens, boom, you'll notice that that disappears. I'm gonna scroll in here. You'll notice that it's already, it's also targeting my keyboard. That's fine, we'll fix that later. Let's open up your screen gain and let's open up your screen map. Two tools that I always use. So you'll notice right here, there's some stuff still left. Let's push the gain up a little bit so it bumps up uh, how powerful we want our, our screen to be uh, or that color and, and what it's targeting. So it, it's kind of like an audio gain. It boosts it up a little bit, right? Um, so let's go over to uh, our view and let's select screen mat so we can see this a little bit better. Let's set that to full. And you can see we have some cleanup to do just a little bit. I like to bump up my blacks just a little bit. Uh, maybe bump down the, the, the whites and then maybe even add a bit of that softness back in set the, my screen softness to 0.5 um, and then that looks pretty good I always go to my key cleaner and for the for the sake of this tutorial you can pretty much leave everything in default and it works phenomenally so before I select the advanced bill suppressor let's go back to our um, intermediate results so we can see it live and then set your settings to full so you can see the resolution and go ahead and hit your advanced fill suppressor as a default and you'll see right there off the bat and you get a really clean key out of everything and if I was to scale this back up to 100% just scrub through the playhead um, and I'm still set to full but if I set it to like let's say thirds hopefully it'll kind of run through you can see that our key is already looking really really solid so boom everything's looking awesome so far um, I'm going to set this to quarter again. Um, the one thing that you'll notice again that I'm going to draw attention to is my keyboard lights are now uh, uh, gone because we've keyed out that color, right? So here's a quick way to fix that. Um, and this is just something to keep in mind. What I typically did uh, and what I did in the last version is I, I duplicated my layer and on that duplicated layer I went ahead and deleted everything. So boom, all of that stuff's gone, right? So here's a cool little technique. So on this duplicated layer, what you can do is you can scroll in here and you can start masking out just the area that you want to target for the, the key, right? So make sure that just the green gets targeted. Boom, you're good to go. And then if you go into our mask path properties right here on that duplicated shot and hit subtract, 
boom, you'll notice that all of our lights on our keyboard come back and we are set and ready to roll. Now the only thing that we need to do though is to make sure that our mask tracks with, with our object and that's gonna take a little bit of manual work. So select mask path, go to your next second, and then this is where you're just gonna have to have some fun and slowly uh, mask all of those parameters and keep your mask working. And one of the tips and tricks that I like to use it, when I'm doing this is select my mask to none as I'm working through all of this. And you'll notice right off the bat, if I select subtract again, I just scrub that one second, boom. My, my, uh, my mask is looking awesome. My key is looking great. Everything looks awesome. At this point, we're on our way. I'm gonna delete that for the sake of the tutorial so you guys can kind of fly with that on your own. But the next thing that we need to do is figure out our endpoint for our transition, right? So let's scrub the playhead. I'm gonna say right about here is when I'm gonna want this to, to start. So I'm gonna say, okay, awesome. This is about where I want my playhead to be when we start this transition. Now there's a few different ways that you guys can tackle this. You can tackle it by opening up a new camera and use your camera to, to, to set the position and parameters and object orientations for your camera to fly into the screen. Or you can set a null or you can animate your actual footage, uh, whatever it is that you wanna do. But uh, yeah, that being said, there's a couple different ways to do it. We're gonna use the null technique here. So right about here, I think that's where we said, yeah. So right about here is where we're gonna make our null. So go ahead and create a new null object, sit it at the very top. We can rename this null, uh, null transition or null movement, whatever you wanna do, just name it whatever you think is awesome. I'm gonna rename my footage to original and then this is going to be screen transition. Okay, cool. So now we've got all of this good to go. First thing that we're gonna wanna do is set a position key, set a rotation key, and set a scale key right here on our null. Hit U to open up all of those position layers. Go out you know, a second or so and set those again. And, the first, and this is really where the transition and all the magic happens. It's not as crazy as you thought, right? Well, let's pedal back a minute. Let's go ahead and set those two layers underneath to track to the null so that we can see the actual motion happening for us real time. So as we work the null, let's go ahead and scale our null up. And because our two layers are pixie width to them and they're actually linked to the null, all of the, the elements that we change on the actual null itself are going to change for us real time as well here. So let's go ahead and scale this bad boy up even more and you just want to do it and play with it until you kind of get this thing right. Um, and again, just a little bit more maybe. All right, so what I'll typically do, I always like to set my easy ease in or my easy ease keys and then control the curves just a little bit more. So individually, I'll go into my curve, my graph editor, and I will slowly dramatize the curves on these just a little bit more so you get a little bit more of that dramatic uh, increase and, and speed ramp on all of those individual parameters, right? On the position, the scale, and the rotation, we want all of that. Now you can go in here and really fine tune and do that a little bit more globally, right? But so far we're looking pretty good already, right? Awesome. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead. Next thing that I typically like to do, and I know this looks a little bit wonky, right? It looks, it looks if we set it to full, this is really, uh, you know, pixelated and it looks kind of weird, you know, now that it's in like that, it looks kind of blurry. Okay, this is really where your screen transition can happen and, and, and be awesome for you. So go back into your, your composition for your screen. We're gonna set the scale, go back to your phone shot and go to the end where, uh, in the timeline where those the transition ends and go ahead and hit another scale. And let's scale this, let's say back down to uh, 100%. All right, and nothing happens. Let's say 80%. And let's say maybe 90%. I don't remember what the ratio is. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it is 90. Okay, cool. 
So, all right, there we are a little bit closer to where we need to be, boom. So we see that scrub in, and that looks pretty good. Still, again, a little blurry. You guys are probably like, man, this guy sucks. Okay, now let's do the magic where we fix all of that stuff. Okay, cool. So let's go back to, into our uh, original, or our secondary layer. We're gonna drop it underneath, and you'll notice that, uh, go ahead and open up our transition. We are going to go right about here and we are going to cut it where our transition starts. We're gonna go into our other footage and we are going to stop our other footage right here as well. Wait, yeah, so, don't, oh, let's stop that. Okay, cool. So now we have that set, right? Okay, so now we have the other clip and you'll notice, boom, there's this little wonky kind of fade, right? Uh, or wonky kind of like blur right there, right? And we wanna fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set our opacity and trans transition. So set your opacity to zero, right where the transition starts. And right when it ends, we're gonna set it to uh, 100%. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing right about here to our screen transition comp. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna set our opacity to 100% and then right about here, we're gonna set that sucker to zero. And you're gonna see, boom, with a little bit of opacity tricks, it looks flawless and nobody will ever know. Now here's, even better, let's add one more final thing to seal the deal on all of this and call it a day, is to add, and I'm gonna go ahead and trim based on where our transition is, uh, this top adjustment layer, and we are gonna add the magic, uh, which everybody needs. On this adjustment layer, you can rename it Motion Blur, the best tool ever on top of masking. Um, to really sell effects. So go ahead and type in force motion blur, select that, boom, set that sucker to maybe something like 16. Let's go ahead and let that ramp or, or, or kind of get going here. And my machine just wants to completely give up right now, but that's all right because we have pretty much summed up and finalized our creative transition through the phone and done something remarkable here. All right, so let's go ahead and scrub it and see what we got. Boom! How sweet is that? So there you go, the cell phone transition, right? If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bells. I'm gonna be doing more tutorials, more bells and whistles, more VFX stuff, more fun stuff, more green screen tricks and, and all of that great stuff. And uh, you know, uh, yeah, so it's gonna be awesome, good times. Follow me on Instagram. I got like five followers on Instagram. I got like 20 followers here, so things are rolling. Things are rolling. It's not even funny anymore. Yeah, let's cue the outro.